What's up guys, welcome back to The Realistic Career Mode with Wrexham. This is episode number 53. And as you can see here today, we're going to take on Barnsley, Preston, Norwich and Swansea as we head towards the end of season three in charge of Wrexham. First season in charge in the championship. It's been a decent season. We're about mid-table. Um, had a bit of a struggle recently, which Josh touched upon there, saying that, you know, a realistic career modes are all part of the struggle and that's what's enjoyable. And that's I, I back that massively. Um, I think that... You know, I don't just want to, you know, win, 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 and and it's easy. I I want it to be a challenge, you know. And um, yeah, shout out Josh for that comment. He also said that, you know, he puts me uh, in the bra his my series in the brackets of uh, Dox's series, which is massive for me personally because I I love Dox's series. Um, his career modes are um are fantastic to watch. They're a great inspiration for my series as well. So massively appreciate that and yeah let's jump into the episode where you would have seen actually um so i showed our scout so i basically messed up um we our scout that was in england uh the last scout report they sent i think it's stefan carlson was our scout that was his last scout report so there was like four players that i was still watching and i um the scout his scouting um series had ended so he basically um, has come back and now I can't access the four players that he scouted. So I should have signed them up to the Youth Academy. I didn't do that. So I'm going to keep that in mind for future scouts. But yeah, that's quite annoying because those four players look decent. Um, I should have just signed them up to the Youth Academy. But anyway, <laughs> we move on. And uh, you would have seen Bristol City came in for a loan offer for Samuel Mason, um, which I, I've accepted. He'll be heading uh, there at the end of well, at the start of next season. He'll be going there on loan, which is cool. I'd like to see the centre back get, get a bit of game time. Uh, for us personally, though, um, uh, yeah, as we mentioned, we're in a bit of a rough patch. Three wins in our last 17. Luckily, our early form um, has bailed us out and we're not in a relegation scrap, but we're also not going to get promoted. So it's sort of just seeing these last group of games out. Um, testing maybe a few new things players in different positions and then getting ready for next season we'll head into this uh, first game of the episode it would be Barnsley away at Oakwell um, we lost 3-2 at home earlier in the season uh, so we head to Oakwell for redemption Barnsley 19th right now six points above the drop zone so they're still you know something to play for for them they're going to be fighting um, I'll be honest this was probably the worst game of the season so far it was awful the first half in particular from both sides I think the first shot of the game came in injury time in the first half and then uh, Paul Mullen uh, with a bit of quality um, after Alfie Devine's interception great through ball and then Mullen with a finish in off the post looked like it was going to be a one goal winner but Barnsley would grab an equaliser which to be honest I could not argue because we did not deserve a win neither team deserved to win this game it was an awful awful game from both teams perspectives but 90th minute to concede the equaliser is pretty rough indeed Mullen though grabbing his 18th goal of the season as he chases his third golden boot in three seasons all in three different divisions as well so hopefully PM10 continue up uh, continue his good form as uh, it looks like we're going to come away from Oakwell with a point as we head. Uh, we're, we've played the allotted two minutes time there and I'm surprised the ref hasn't blown the whistle there actually. Barnsley won the ball back and we were in the third minute of two added on. Maybe he's added a little extra for the Barnsley celebrations. Can we make it count? Lowry into James Milner! <laughs> oh God, I said we didn't deserve it, but I will take it. James Milner, the veteran, now 40 years young, grabs the game-winning goal here and we get our revenge on Barnsley after they beat us at home earlier in the season James Milner with his first goal for the Red Dragons and deep 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 into injury time the ref we there was only two added on but we were into four I think by the time that ball hit the back of the net the ref must have added on a little bit more because of the Barnsley celebrations Lowry with a great ball to the back stick and Milner with the tenacity and the drive and the hunger still after 20 plus years of playing at the top elite level, he has still got it, James Milder. And he grabs his first goal in a Wrexham shirt as we steal all three points from this one. Like I said, undeserved, but we'll take it. And that win actually takes us to the 50 point mark, which is which is a mega um, landmark to hit. I know that our form has obviously been very well documented. That it's been awful. That's just our fourth win in our last 18 games. But... To hit 50 points on the season is a really good achievement. And considering we've gone, well, in the series, we've gone back-to-back -back promotions. But obviously, Wrexham got promoted um, the year before into the League 2. Um, so technically, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back promotions. The fact that we're not fighting relegation in our first season in the Championship makes me very happy. And, 
you, you can see the table there, 13th now, just outside the top half. I would love to finish in the top half. That would be a really cool achievement for us. But we're looking very strong. Um, in the first season, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Obviously, you know, we've we've um, in the series, all we've focused on is winning and uh, getting promoted. But this, this season has been more about um, just sort of riding the wave and uh not getting not getting too down about our form i know i think if you look to the form if you look to any team and said you know four wins in the last 18 that's quite concerning you know maybe the boss's job needs to be questioned but for me i think considering the you have to take perspective and you know back-to-back -back promotions i'm happy with surviving the championship i'm looking forward to the summer to reinvest in the team and then next year we'll crack on and hopefully push for, for playoffs or something but yeah, anyway, we're going into the second game of the episode and we will be facing a team who are in a similar situation to us. Preston, who are a few positions above us, but 15 points off the playoff. So they're in that midfield pack that are just sort of seeing out the season now. Uh, we beat them 2-1 earlier in the season, actually. So looking for a league double. And, well, we would take an early lead here. James Milner's got his shooting boots on all of a sudden. He fires a shot from the edge of the box. Keeper gets a save to it. I think it's Freddie Woodman in the sticks. Really good save, actually. But Paul Mullen on hand to nod home the go-ahead goal as we would start this game very, very fast. Milner, Roberts and Chambers all brought in. By the way, Patrick Roberts, I've been really disappointed with him this season. I need him to show me why he should still be in this team. He's asking for a first-team spot, but he isn't deserving of it. So I need to see a response, Patrick. Well, the lead would not last long. More defensive errors from us, honestly. It's, uh, it's a boring tale, this. Uh, cross comes in from the Preston uh, winger and I don't know, I think it was Josh Earl in the end who completely misses the header and they uh, level it up and then Preston would get the go-ahead goal. I mean, how is your luck? Following him makes a really good save. The deflection goes straight back to the striker who shot goes through the defender and following him um, as they attempt to block it and Preston uh, come from a goal down to lead here 2-1. On the stroke for half time, Bennett would get to the uh, to the byline, but unfortunately, Mullins' shot is dragged just wide. But then in the second half, Lowry with a loose pass, but then Bennett wins it back. Lowry to Mullin. Mullin with a beautiful through ball to Jewis, and Bennett first touch it takes him wide. But that second touch is outrageous. Jewis and Bennett. My God, this guy might have been player of the season. I I'm not too sure. He's been absolutely fantastic for us. And I think that... If it wasn't for his injury, potentially we would have been pushing for the playoffs. Who knows? But Jewison and Bennett showing his class once again. That finish is outrageous. A lobbed finish over Freddie Woodman in the sticks. And we are back tied at two apiece. But back come Preston. This has been a much, much better game than her. The last one against Barnsley and Fodderingham has to deny Preston a second lead of the night. Corner would come in though. Half cleared away. McCain, what can he do? Out to Potts, back to McCain. Potts, this is great pressure from Preston. They've hit the post. Fish, can he get it out? Oh, my God. I mean, we spoke about bad luck in the first half. How was this, though? Jesus. Fish and Fodderingham getting in each other's way. And the shot, well, not the shot, sorry. The attempted clearance just bounces off Fodderingham and goes in. I think it goes down as a fish own goal in the end. And Preston retake the lead and then they almost double their lead here. Shot fizzing past the post. As we're into the final 10 minutes now, looking to uh, take a quick throw in. But Jewison and Bennett, I couldn't control him. It was really annoying. He he was complaining to the referee about something. I'm not sure what it was. And I couldn't actually control him because I wanted to take the quick throw in from Chambers. Really frustrating that as we're into the last five minutes now and the ball is down the wrong end for us. Preston looking to seal the game and they have... Jewis and Bennett, what are you doing to me, man? We were just talking about how you're potentially being player of the season and then you're doing something like that. Oh, God, that's so frustrating, man. I, I couldn't do anything. I tried to take a quick throw in with Chambers. It wouldn't let me control Bennett. Preston go down the other end and score and then in injury time, I think that's Ledson grabs uh, their fifth uh, from a Will Keane assist. And, well, what could have been a, a good night here in North Wales turns into an ugly one. Preston take the win. 5-2. Back to losing ways. So, I mean, such is our season. It's sort of one step forward, one step back at the moment. But, you know, that's just that's just how these seasons are sometimes. If you're in that sort of mid-table mid pack where you're not pushing for playoffs, but you're not going to be relegated, you're sort of just, yeah, one step forward, one step back. The The drive and the hunger isn't there, unfortunately, and... Yeah, you can see that the, we remain on the 50-point mark 
as uh, those five goals now mean, I think we have one of the leakiest defences. I think we're just behind Rotherham, um, which is awful, to be honest. Um, the fact that we've got such a leaky defence, that was our issue in the first season or so. But yeah, we need to shore up that defence next season, that is for sure. Well, heading into the third game of the episode, I'm liking this. Um, I, I look at this, uh, rather than just showing the lineup now, I look at the the uh, match preview so you can see Norwich's form as well and potential players that they have out or suspended. Really, really like that screen. So I'll be showing that instead of just the lineups now before each game. Norwich, four wins on the bounce as they look to cement a playoff spot. They are currently occupying that last, last position, seventh place right now. But they are in really good form, are the Canaries, winning their last four. Tom Williams on the bench for them, obviously on loan from us. I wish I wish that FC would implement, you know, a rule in the game where loan players can't play against their parent clubs. You know, it just sort of just takes away from the realism. Uh, Williams on loan from us, he shouldn't be uh, featuring for, uh, for Norwich against us today. That's just, it's simply that. And I feel like that couldn't be too hard to implement to the game. So FC, sort it out, please. Well, we would make five changes going into this one. Hayden, Guest, Divine, Mendy and Elliot Lee all coming in. And it would be Aaron Hayden, the captain, grabbing his first goal of the season. Alfie Divine with a wicked cross from the corner. And Hayden heads home to give us an early lead in this one. But it would not last too long. Um, once again, um, our defensive uh, vulnerabilities are... Uh, enhanced and Adam Eder takes advantage of Jewison Bennett missing a really good chance just moments earlier um, and he grabs his uh, uh, grabs his first goal of the game and gives Norwich the leveler in this one as uh, they these points are more valuable for them than they are for us right now but sometimes that means that you know the team playing for more um, actually play a bit more play a bit more nervous uh, whereas <laughs> Oh my word, sorry just to cut out there, but <laughs> Rocco Vata with another potential goal of the season. Oh my word, he scored a bicycle kick of Middlesbrough earlier in the campaign. He has scored an absolute worldie again here. This kid is special. Uh, Mendy with the whipped ball in, another assist for Jacob Mendy. Beautiful delivery, but what is that kick? It, it's like a, a sidewinder, but six feet in the air and that i mean look at that angle that is gorgeous into the top corner angus gun no chance and we retake the lead here uh and uh, rocco vata grabs the go-ahead goal for us well norwich would get to work pretty much straight away and despite winning the ball back we actually give it away again and adam eder working his way into the box and grabbing his and norwich's second goal of the game that goal was actually pretty central i'm not sure what was was doing there oh oh well I mean, I can see what's happened here now. Their striker is just standing right in front of Wes. If this was the Premier League, if there was VAR, that would be ruled out for offside because Fodderingham had his view uh, disrupted. And I was wondering why that shot just went, beat him straight down the middle. That's quite annoying. But we're not in the Premier League, Junior. We need to crack on and we are losing now. 3-2, Jonathan Rowe with the go-ahead goal. Uh, if you remember when we played Norwich at Carrow Road earlier in the season, Jonathan Rowe scored an injury time winner and it looks like he's going to grab the winner here again for his side. And well, they rubber stamp the, the victory. Corner comes in and the header is, um, I don't know how it beats the man on the post, but somehow it does. And then uh, with a few minutes to go, a chance to get back into the game. But Paul Mullin blazing this one wide. My God, Paul, that is not like you at all. And then just to uh, just to, just to really really put a dampener on it, Ashley Barnes, with his own celebration in the game, grabs the fifth goal, and it is going to be back to back five two defeats. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Ten goals conceded in two games is not ideal at all. And for the second time this season, Rocco Vatter has scored a potential goal of the season and been on the losing side. I'm sorry, Rocco, you deserve better than that, my friend. I am sorry. In both games, we conceded five as well. That's not. A, uh, not a pattern I want to focus on. But yeah, Norwich, I mean, obviously, like we said, they're, they're hot in form right now. That's five wins on the bounce for the Canaries as they look to cement their place in the playoffs. But for us, we drop one place to 14th. Stoke moving above us. Back-to-back -back defeats. Back-to-back -back five, two defeats as well. Ten goals shipped in two games. Well, we'll see here. Samuel Mason's loan deal to Bristol City is going to be confirmed. He'll be heading there. 
uh, at the start of next season for a year. He'll replace Dexter Riley, who is a centre back that we have on loan there at the moment. He'll be coming back and then Samuel Mason will be going there. So hopefully it'll be a good loan spell for Mason. And then we sift through a hectic Welsh scout uh, scouting update. Uh, we reject a bunch of players, um, but there are three that we do sign up after the um, hiccup with the English scout. I, I think this scout report is ending soon, so I want to I want to promote as many players as possible to get them in the scout uh, in our academy. So Alan Brown, the right back, Lloyd Thomas, the goalkeeper, and Ethan Allen, the uh, centre attacking middle centre forward. We sign those three up and then Dylan Owen will remain the sole player that we continue scouting. Those three Welsh players look OK. Overalls aren't fantastic. So we'll we'll um, well, we'll sign up uh, Thomas and Green to the first team and then get them out on loan, get them playing some first team football next season. As we head into the fourth game of the episode, and it is a big Welsh derby. Swansea at the, uh, uh, is it the Swansea.com stadium now? I think in the game they actually said um, Liberty Stadium still, but I'm pretty sure it's the Swansea.com stadium. 18th place right now, Swansea eight points behind us. Um, I don't think they're looking over their shoulder though, so they are pretty safe from relegation as well. Uh, we beat the Swans 2-0 back in October. That was our second Welsh derby victory of the season already. Um, can we complete the double over our rivals and maybe turn a corner on our form? It's, I mean, our, our form, I guess, isn't too important now that, you know, we're not really playing for much. But I do want to see from some players why they should be starting next season because there are question marks over a few, that is for sure. Well, we make one change from the side that lost to Norwich. James Milner is back in the, mid, uh, in the midfield, uh, replacing Alfie Devine, who drops to the bench. I absolutely love Alfie Devine. I think he's been fantastic this season. The one thing we do need to work on, though, is his fitness because um, he, he just does not have the ability to play two games in a week at all, whereas some do, um, which is, is, is a bit frustrating just because I need that quality for him in that midfield. Well, Swansea would take an early lead. Matt Grimes with his third goal of the season, just four minutes in. I mean, Swansea exposing a, uh, a Wrexham defence that is so low in confidence right now. And you just see how easy it was for them to thread the needle and uh, force their way through here. And then another turnover, Josh Earl this time, who has really dipped in form recently. He gives the ball away and Walsh scores in the Welsh derby as Swansea look to take a commanding lead in this one. 19 minutes in and it is 2-0. Well, five minutes before the break, Alex Lowry would have a fantastic chance to equalise here, but a great save from Fisher in between the sticks. Uh, can we grab anything, though, from the corner? Milner's delivery comes in, but Paul Mullins' header hits the roof of the net and we would head into the break 2-1 down. Well, into the second half, Mendy would find James Milner. Can he hit one? He's been up for, uh, up for a few goals this uh, episode, but no, he finds Paul Mullen instead. And PM10 grabs his 20th league goal of the season to half the deficit. And we are back in this one. Milner with two goal contributions in three games. Well, three potentially, if you can count the uh, shot off the crossbar, because apparently that's assists now. You know, I watched Ch Chelsea beat Tottenham yesterday and Palmer's shot hit the bar, Jackson headed in the rebound, and that counted as an assist. I'm not really sure what that's about. No wonder these players have crazy stats these days, you know, giving assists for anything. <laughs> anyway, um, back off that tension, Elliot Lee would find Paul Mullin, and uh, two goals within 10 minutes would see us level in this one. And this second half performance is a lot better, much, much better, and what I expect from the team. As uh, Swansea had a free kick from the edge of the box, we looked counter-attack, Koulibaly finds Bennett out wide, Alex Lowry now in the middle. Paul Mullin for the hat trick. <laughs> this guy is incredible, man. Forget his age. He is just a natural born winner, a goal scorer, and the captain of Wrexham now that Aaron Hayden has basically been dropped from the starting lineup. Wearing that armband, leading by example, scoring a hat trick, a second half hat trick. Look at that finish. Top bins to silence the home fans. And we've come from 2-0 down at half-time to lead 3-2 thanks to a Mullen hat-trick. Goals 20, 21 and 22 on the season as Wes denies Swansea an equaliser there in the 78th minute. Well, Jerry Yates, uh, the sub who's just been brought on, swings in across here. I don't know where my defence is though. And Paul, I'm sorry. That's all I can say because, you know, your your efforts down one end, are they deserve more. But unfortunately, our defence is just awful right now. And, you know, we're defending a derby lead with just a couple minutes to go. Why have we got one defender in the box when a cross comes in? Question marks have to be asked. I'm sorry. And 
Jerry Lake swings the ball in. Jacob Mendy um, can't get to the can't get to the ball when Key. I'll be I'll be honest. It's a nice volley, good volley into the ground. Beats Fodderingham, but uh, Swansea would nick a draw here. Two 0 up. I mean, they're probably actually disappointed with the result considering they were two 0 up at half time. Referee blows full time. Um, and we have to share the spoils in Wales. So happy with that. I mean, I take it considering we're two 0 down at half time. Paul Muller with a hat trick. I think that's his what third hat trick this season. He has been phenomenal as uh, we share the points with Swansea. Remain undefeated, which um, I'm happy to see. But the defensive issues continue, and uh, Carmel touches upon it here, saying that our midfield and attack seems very solid, which I'd agree on. But the defence needs looking at, and that is something that we are going to do next season. In the summer window, we are going to um, basically maybe have a whole revamp of the defence. I'm not too sure. But get your transfer suggestions in the comments right now. Defensive options, give me uh, give me some shouts. We did have a couple um, shouts in January. A few players I am keeping an eye on. I might try and poach in, in the summer, but I'm always welcome to transfer suggestions. Well, um, you would have seen Patrick Roberts came to us and said, look, boss, I'm not getting the minutes. I want out. And to be honest, Patrick, that's fine with me, mate. You've been awful this season. Came in last year, helped us win promotion, which you, I was thrilled about. But this year, I think he's got three assists and that's it. it but he's just been, a, if you look away from the stats, he's been poor. I haven't noticed him in games. And so I'm happy for Patrick Roberts to move on in the summer. Well, that'll be it for today's episode. Episode 53. As you can see there, we're sat in 14th place with Wrexham with six games to go left in this campaign. We won't get promoted, but we won't get relegated either. So if you have any uh, transfer suggestions, make sure you get them in below. And don't forget, next episode, I will be asking you for your player awards we're going to do for the first time as suggested at the start of this season we're going to do player awards so they are going to be decided by you player of the season young player of the season signing of the season but we'll talk more about that in the next episode i hope you're enjoying the series guys drop a like on the video if you are sub to the channel if you haven't already and i'll catch you in episode 54 very soon